The title of this message will most definitely raise some people's blood pressure, and maybe it should. The days of soft peddling the gospel are most definitely over. As the false teachers and preachers are on the rise, those called to preach truth must stand, raise their voices and be more bold than ever before. To stand next to the road and to yell and shout at the top of our lungs will most assuredly bring reproach. But with the Spirit of God, it will hopefully turn even one from eternal damnation to eternal life. Like drones, mankind is marching straight to hell as if in the matrix, under some kind of delusion that they are so wonderful that God will be glad to have them. The world as we know it are full of the self-righteous that think that they are on the broad road to heaven and the murderer and the rapist are destined for hell on the narrow road. The vast majority of people think that they are actually good people and rely on this notion that on the day they stand before God, he will know their heart and acknowledge their goodness and welcome them in. Even the atheist thinks in the back of his mind that if there is a God, I'll be okay, as I'm nowhere near as bad as a man like Adolf Hitler. Again, another preconceived idea that we somehow know the mind of God and in our opinions have a pretty good understanding of who will go to heaven and who will go to hell. Let's take Adolf Hitler, mass murderer of six million Jews and as most would agree a certified lunatic. We have absolutely no hesitation in stating unreservedly that he is suffering as we speak in hell. Then we look at the life of Mother Teresa, a lifetime dedicated to the poor and sick, made a saint by the Roman Catholic Church. Again, we would state that she's in heaven because she was such a good person. What if I told you you could be completely wrong? And at this very moment, Adolf Hitler could be rejoicing in heaven and Mother Teresa being tormented in eternal fire in hell. Unthinkable, yet very possible. You see, God doesn't judge by our standards. He judges righteously. So let's say hypothetically that moments before death, Adolf Hitler falls to his knees. Overcome by remorse, his heart contrite with grief and repents before God and asks Jesus Christ to be his Lord and Saviour. Question. Does God refuse salvation on the grounds that his deeds were by all accounts too blatantly evil, which they were? Or does Scripture say, all that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved? In Romans 10 verse 13, it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What if Mother Teresa died never truly converting to Christianity, but lived a life of good works? Does God count this to her account? Or as the scripture says, your good works are like filthy rags before me. And she then spends eternity in hell. Now I know you think she was a Christian. She was a devout Catholic. It might be news to you, but being a Catholic does not make you a Christian. In Isaiah 64 verse 6, it says we have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like polluted garment. Ah, but that wouldn't be fair, would be the outcry. Mother Teresa held sainthood by the Catholic Church. That in itself should guarantee heaven. Do you see with what foolishness we presume to counsel God? In Job 38 verse 2, it says, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? The Bible very plainly and very clearly states that the predetermined way to attain everlasting life. And nowhere does it state through your own goodness. In fact, quite the opposite. In John 3 verse 2, it says, This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now many are like me. When buying a new appliance, we bypass the user manual, plug it in and battle for ages before finally conceding and referring to the user manual. Even then, we don't take the time to thoroughly read it. We browse over it and try and search for what is relevant for now. Do we do the same when it comes to God's user manual for us, the Bible? He has given us clear and precise directions on how to attain everlasting life with Him. Yet we bypass the manual and try and make up our own ways. And if we do read it, we rush to the parts relevant to our current crisis or need. Everyone seeks their own truth. 
whatever feels good for the flesh, making a God in our own image that pats us on the back for our good deeds, overlooks our bad and rubber stamps our iniquity, as that's the way he made you. We live a life in this lie and then we think that we, when we take our last breath and we stand before him, we can justify our case by declaring we just didn't know any better. I did my best. One thing I must point out, none of us are good. I mean, you may think you are good using man's standards, but man will not be your final judge. And by God's standards, we are all guilty. End of the story. God is a righteous judge and has to judge righteously or he goes against his own nature. Again, God says what he means and he means what he says. If not, he's a liar by definition. In Hebrews 6 verse 18, it says, So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope that sits, is set before us. So if God means what he says and says what he means, that places you and me in a whole lot of trouble. Why? In Romans 3 verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. If God deviates from his word, he can no longer be trusted. If he judges on emotion rather than righteousness, I cannot trust him with my salvation. But if he never lies and stands over his word to perform it, I can therefore trust in his word and know the outcome. In the account of the rich young ruler, we see immediately how Jesus responds to a self-righteous young man that judges by outward appearances and works. In Mark 10 verse 17, it says, And as he, Jesus, was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Here Jesus shows that number one, no one is good but God. Number two, this young man was judging by man's standards of goodness as he addresses Jesus as good teacher, earthly status, and not Lord. Jesus therefore answers him on an earthly level and states, you cannot call me good as no one is good but God. Now in closing, don't judge yourself by man's standards. You will always come up cleaner than someone else. Judge yourself by God's standards and you will come up short every time. Throw yourself at the mercy of Jesus Christ who has already paid your penalty due in full and final. And instead of getting what you rightly deserve, damnation for eternity, receive everlasting life from the one that knew no sin but became sin in our place. He took the punishment we deserve because he knew we would never be able to attain the righteousness God requires, which is moral excellence. Nothing but pure moral perfection can stand before him. And both you and me will just never cut it. Only once we accept the fact that we are criminals in his sight and have broken his laws can we receive the forgiveness offered to us through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and then become his children. We stand before him in the righteousness given to us by Jesus Christ and not of our own. So to be very clear, if you choose to rely on yourself, you will without a doubt spend eternity in hell even if you did a lifetime of good works. Hell is full of good people. And even if you have spent a lifetime in wickedness, there is salvation and forgiveness in Christ. Heaven is full of forgiven sinners. In Matthew 7 verse 13, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. This is Barry Hutton for his Infinite Mercy Ministries preaching the truth of Jesus Christ and exposing the lies of Satan. Amen.